Hello, it's time for another fishing video. I'm back in the marsh. After the beatdown Chris gave me two weeks ago, I gotta try again. So this time I'm down there with Mike. We're starting the trip by driving down in the morning. We got there around 11 o'clock, got on the water, fished that afternoon, and we really got into the fish. We had a great time catching those small redfish. The locals call undersized redfish rat reds. And we caught a bunch of rats. We caught a few keepers and a few other species. And I think I redeemed myself after getting such a beat down by Chris. If you haven't watched that video, take a look at the beat down. I've put a link right here above. All right, so sit back and relax. And I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. Oh, almost forgot. Stick around to the end of the video and you get to see an epic boat ride. Some pretty tough waves, but I had a really good uh, boat captain. <laughs> Man, he really held it together. I would have swamped that boat. Thanks again for watching. Yep. Be nice to catch a few. I'm pretty confident we're going to get into some redfish. I just hope we, we catch some other fish too. Oh, look at that to your left. Huh? Nutria. Since it's cold, we're focusing on the deep water in the curves and in the major intersections. The action started pretty quick. I hope he makes the slot. Yep, he's a shorty. First one of the day. Yeah. It, hopping it. Hopping it. Well, there's a little shorty. But we're getting into him, man. Oh, he's cold, too. What you got? Another little rat. Yeah. Well, that's one more. A trout. a trout. He looks like a keeper, doesn't he? Yeah, they Trying to hold the bait in position yeah. right off the bottom. And just the natural rock of the boat or your own your own little your own little movement. They uh he's short. Or your own little natural movement, you just suddenly feel something. You gotta be 18, right? Yeah, these gotta be 18. This is gonna be probably 13 or 14. Right there on the side of the boat. Yeah, we'll just see for her reference to get start calibrating. All right, so that's zero and that's 14 three quarters. Wait, wait a minute, 14 and a quarter. I, I'm only one fish from having a slam. Yeah, Man. flounder or a tarpon. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you find? I got one too. <laughs> yeah, we got us a double. Another rat, mine's too. Mine's small too. Multi spot rats. Multi spots. Just got peed on. Pretty little fish. I love that blue green on our tails. Yeah. That's just pretty. You need to get the net? Uh, yeah, he looks like he's gonna be 18. Got a little better color too. He's close. Yep. I got a measure board in here too. He is real close to 18. Stand that net up now. Ow. Maybe 
Well, I'm right here, so I'll go ahead and try this. It's not like a kayak tournament where it's got to be an official measuring board. Oh, no. Let me get him zeroed. He's this measurement sets the tone for the rest of the trip. If you've been around inshore fishermen, you've heard them say they got into the rat reds. Well, you're about to see what that looks like. When I first started editing this video footage, I cut it down to just the fish catches. From hook set to throw bag, fish after fish after fish. There was over an hour of just straight catches. And most of the time, we were doubled up. We caught a lot of fish. He wasn't there than he was. Oh, what a pretty color. I don't like that. Right here in this bend, <laughs> we kept discussing what we felt before we caught the fish. You know, what was the correct technique? And what we determined was like that, that you needed to have a jig and you needed to drag it slowly across the bottom, a few hops from time to time, and that's about it. They didn't like a lot of action and your bait had to be on the bottom. I feel like I'm coming over the back sometimes. Yeah. Something hard, yeah. They're about halfway. All right. Like. Anything particular you're doing? Huh? Are you just dragging? Or are you bumping? Hopping, swimming, whatever, you know, just keeping it moving. Another one on the next cast, huh? I never got to move it. It picked it up off the bottom. Threw it right on top of his head, huh? I guess. It's like pulling one of these corners and they were all 20 inches, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was playing with it for a while. I thought I was dragging across the mud, but I think it was him just trying to pick it up. Or he had it and I didn't realize it. He's a little bigger, yeah. We're gonna put him up there and look at him. All right, so let's let's hope for some 18, but we ain't gonna get it. 17. Yeah. Wow, well, look at there. Look at that. There's hope. Now you're one fish from the slam. Yep. That's another unique, nice looking fish when you when you stop and take a look at him. Look at his patterns and his colors and camo. all the oddities about him. It's, that's a neat fish. All right, buddy, go. Another flounder. <laughs> so he's definitely 12, huh? Oh, look, look, Jim. Jim, I've already forgotten where this is. He's certainly 12. I, I, I checked him, so. Hot day. Three on one side, three on the other. Sure it's the last cast? <laughs> we both catch one on the last cast. There's my slam right there. And he might be 15 inches. Look, I told you I felt Look at there. Look at that. I got my, my slam in just before you. Make sure he's not 15 Man, this is so much fun. We caught redfish, we caught speckled trout, and we caught flounder. And both of us completed our inshore slam within seconds of each other. Exactly 14. That's funny, we both caught our slam at the same time. We decided to move and try to find some bigger fish. <laughs> She just likes the way I talk. All right, now hold on. Now I never moved that one. This one might be a few more feet. It may not. I'm coming. I don't know. I think he's going to be short. He's short, yeah. Well, we got a 10 pound line. There you go. Well, you beat me a little bit on speed, so let me switch to a different color. 
Yeah, it sure would be nice to win in the live well. You need to relax a little bit. He's going to be short. 17. Huh. There's your buddy, Mr. Nutri. Hey, man. Where are you going? <laughs> We're just getting there. Yo. That last fish that Mike caught was a little bigger than the others. He was right at 17 inches. A little too short to keep, but bigger. And it was in shallow water. And then I hook into this one again in shallow water. Probably the biggest one of the trip. And he breaks me off. I don't know if I had a nick in my line or what, but he didn't stay on long, but he sure felt big. I'm going to check mine right now. Are we time to retie. First good redfish, and I lose him. Gosh, dog. The thing is, there's no excuse for not retie. No, because I know better. Everything down here has got teeth. And gill plates that'll cut your hand. Yep, they do. It's probably a gill plate that got it because nothing had it swallowed. Well, now I'll tell you what, I was dragging uh, I real would slow. It probably was worn from all the other fish that you've caught and had contact with. <laughs> I was so upset about that fish when I retied my jig. I cut the main line instead of the tag line and cut the jig off my line again. I had to retie one more time. And it broke? Clipped the wrong end. Oh, do you clipped? <laughs> He'll be all right, Jim. I'm, I'm upset, man. I'm upset. He'll be all right. Really? And here we are, right back into the rats again. Yeah. I kind of like this kind of fish. You just sit and you throw out the <laughs> <laughs> Look how Look how blue that tail is. See that? Yeah, that's incredible. Wow, that's beautiful. Another 16 or 17 inch fish. Yeah. So, I mean, there was... Oh, landed right in his mouth. But they're in that deeper pocket right, over, right past there. We're making long casts right now just to reach some deeper water. There is an intersection up ahead. It's 12 to 15 feet deep. We'll move up there in just a second. Oh, there's another one. Right in his mouth. <laughs> nah. He may be a little bigger than the last couple. That tail is blue. Though. That tail is something else, ain't it? <laughs> I just wonder if it wasn't getting to the bottom. It kept taking one. Oh, he let it go. And he picked it back up. There, there's a pretty good school of them in there. Yeah, there's got to be more than one keeper red in there. He got on the bank, wasn't he? He's got a little more, a little more strength to him, huh? Yep. Let me get my net. That would be nice. That would just be hilarious. If this is not a keeper, I'm going to be amazed. It's just, it made a big boil out there. Oh, oh yeah. that's a good one there. Hoo wee. Very nice. I'm going to lead him to you because I can barely see my jig. Next time yep. I get him up. Got him. Perfect. Perfect. Good one. Yeah, that jig is right there in his mouth. A little pliers are right there. Oh, look, what, what? oh that's... What is that on the side? Something was in oh, the net. Something that was in the net. Um, They're right under your butt, I see them. Let me try these aluminum ones. Now you get the hook off of them. You sure you can hold him? <laughs> he wasn't moving when I had him a second ago. I'm gonna say this, you got to retire now. Yeah. I think it's out. The hook's loose. The line's just tangled up. Good one. Let me get out of the, out of the sunshine. Very good fish. Send something to Martha. All right, hold him up a little bit so you can try to get him to straighten out. That'll work too. 
All right, I'm gonna send you those. Yeah, he was swimming to me with it. He is a little bigger, but he is not a keeper. This one may keep. Come on, buddy. Nope. Cause they're not they're not alone. Yeah. This may be the smallest. Definitely. <laughs> Ain't this just the funnest thing? Yeah. How many redfish can be in one hole? Uh, <laughs> bigger fish. Look at him go. Close. While Mike is still wearing out those rat reds, I decided to try something different, hoping to catch bigger fish. I put on a redfish spinnerbait with a chartreuse swimming mullet. These redfish didn't want anything to do with that. It may just be use the technique they're biting on and just sort through them. Well, that technique of catching a bunch of rats and sorting out larger fish didn't work. They must be somewhere else. I switched back to the jig and the slow drag, and I got bit immediately. And here we are still catching them almost every cast. And doubled up at that. Three and how many? Three, do they, do they match? They're pretty close. Pretty close. Hit it again. I think both of them, shipping and everything was... Uh... Yep, I agree. A little tension to see, and there's a fish. <laughs> Oh, look at there. Uh oh. How many? How many? A bunch. I thought I saw four. There's one way down the tail. There's four on this side. One, two, three, four, five, six on that side. What? Ten. Four and six. I'm looking at that. There's my, my your, your lines are swimming off. They're swimming around out there. <laughs> See if it's the shrimp shape or just the slow presentation and the gulp smell. Oh, he's got a little run to him. Come on, baby. Be a keeper. Oop, nope. Whatever it is is going to live well. It's a keeper. Oh yeah. Alright, here he comes. Oh, I got my keeper. Perfect. Net? Yep. I think it's going to be. I think he is. He 
because you might want to double check the measurements, but he looks every bit of 18 and a quarter. <laughs> Oh, come on. No, 17, 16 and a half. Golly. Okay, okay. I know. That's enough of that. So now you know what it's like when someone says that they got into the rat reds. We caught a lot more fish than this, but this is all I'll show you for the day. Mike did manage to catch a nice keeper flounder on the way out of the bayou. As big as any I think it is. But it was, you don't leave stuff like that. Uh oh. Bottom. I'm going to tell you. I got a good hook set on it, though. Just sit there. No, they move with it. Yeah. Usually these big ones stacked up in, in the wintertime yeah. like this. We, we caught two keepers and lost two keepers. The rest of them were just tons of rats. Yeah. There's a lot of rats around. So what, what what's your best bet for in the morning? Ah. <laughs> uh, with the water being this low, it's crazy because they, they still want to be shallow, even though the water's low. They're yeah. still in no water. Huh. So if you can get shallow, I mean, there's that's where the good ones are. Yeah. Like, I couldn't. I, I didn't know. You really got to find the right place and squeeze in. Them turned right and grab them right behind the head. All right, there we go. That's not bad for about three and a half hours of fishing. We're going to call it a day and hit it again tomorrow. All right, it is cold. It is 30 degrees and Mike just hurt his finger. No, just... <laughs> snap, back, snap back on you. Hit the end of it. Oh. Day two is underway. We're headed out into the Gulf for a short run to get over to the bayou, and then we'll go back in to where we caught fish yesterday afternoon. We're pretty confident we can get back on the fish, and we're hoping some larger fish will be with those smaller ones today. Picked up right where we left off yesterday. We're off to a great start. What? Oh yeah, I'll do it. <clears throat> One though. That's one. How many spots on that side? One. One. Put him over where he can't tell nobody. Yeah. Uh, uh. Same place as yesterday, huh? On the bottom. Yeah. Well, let me get my bottom rig out. 
My bottom rig. It's a little better. You got it? Yeah. He might, he might be close. He looks pretty pretty close to it. Alright dude, start with the acrobatics. Quit. Huh? I'm talking to my fish. He just won't be still. I just lost my cork down. Yeah. That's a three and two. Huh? So that was a three and a two. Oh yeah, perfect. Two on that one and four on the other. Huh. It's almost like he had five spots, but two of them are too close together. This morning was a repeat of the previous day. We caught a lot of fish, but only the one keeper. You're about to see an epic boat ride. If I were with anybody else, I would have been really, really nervous. Mike's experience driving a boat proved to be invaluable. I probably would have swamped this boat on the way out if I had been driving. He is so good at it that he was able to talk and drive one-handed and wave and point and uh, just seemed so relaxed, but this was pretty treacherous in a 17-foot aluminum boat in the Gulf. Yeah. Oh crap! So Mike is nonchalantly helping guide me through what he's doing, teaching me what to look for, and he's also giving me something really important here. Different bodies of water have different risks. For instance up in some of the northern lakes, the bottom may have giant boulders, you know, just large rocks on them. So if you ride a wave and fall down in between the swells, you might actually fall onto a boulder. So it's important you know your body of water, you know all the risks before you leave the launch. If you're uncertain, it's probably best not to go. Tell you what, if you don't know what you're doing out here, it's, it's, it's bad. I routinely see requests on Facebook by boaters asking, is it safe to go here in this boat, or is it safe to go there in that boat? The answer is maybe. It depends on the weather and the individual operator's skill level. That's just the way it is. There's not an easy answer for it. next little patch looks pretty ugly. This next patch through here looks pretty ugly. Probably where it's shallow. the fours. Trough's pretty deep on them, aren't they? Yikes! Thank <laughs> you. 
you know what you're doing because I I'd have already speared into that one. This was a fantastic trip. We caught a lot of fish. We had a great time. Even this rough ride on the way out didn't dampen our spirits. As a matter of fact, it served to put an exclamation point on the trip. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I hope it was entertaining for you. And please hit the thumbs up button for this video. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with someone you think that might enjoy it. And as always, I encourage you to go outdoors, do something fun, and share it with someone.